So this is the Lotus Temple in Delhi, in India. And um, it's an absolutely amazing building. It, it looks like a lotus flower, which is why it's called the Lotus Temple. What happened was an architect came to see us with a cardboard model of a lotus flower floating in water. And he said, this is going to be a temple in Delhi. And a temple, you know, it's a rather important kind of building. It's going to be there for a long time. And we want you, as the engineers, to help us make it. So our challenge was, first of all, to work out what the geometry should be. He's got a lotus flower. What should be the geometry? And then how can the people who have to build it set that out and construct it properly? But the joy of, our, of, of the project was to work out how to form these different shells. So there are three layers of petals, if you like, for the flower. The inner ones, the taller ones, which come right up to the top. They're about 35 meters high. And then the outer ones, the outer petals, and then these ones on the outside, which are kind of like, like um, canopies over the entrances. So there are three layers and then nine around the, around the circumference. There are nine all the way around, nine times three. And they're, they're all shells, concrete shells. So our job as the engineers was to work out how to define the geometry of those shells so that somebody could build them. And of course, work out how thick they needed to be, how strong they needed to be, and all that stuff. This is a place where you get earthquakes and you get strong winds. And it's a, it's a temple, they want it to be there for a long time. So we had to design for much stronger earthquakes and winds than you would if you were just designing an ordinary building. We had to put it in a wind tunnel test and did all sorts of, of, of clever uh, calculations and analysis. This is the very early days of computers. Uh, so we were able to use computer analysis in a way that had not really been done before. And if we hadn't had those computer tools, we could, just couldn't have done it. Just impossible. Some people compare this to, and in fact confuse it, with the Sydney Opera House, which is actually a picture over here. Um, it is sort of similar, They're, but actually this, these are genuine shells. These are just concrete, reinforced concrete shells. The top ones, they're 200 millimeters thick. That's about 20 centimeters thick. And the, the outer ones, they get even thinner at the top. Whereas the Sydney Opera House is, a, is a, what we call a grillage, a kind of grid of beams with infill panels in between. So a very different kind of technology, but that was earlier. If they'd had the computers that we had, they may have done it the same way. And then the, the, the really fantastic thing about this building, I think, was the way it was built. It was built uh, on site, in situ, obviously, reinforced concrete, in situ, but by um, unskilled Indian labor, placing the concrete by hand, you know, carrying uh, little pans of concrete on their head and placing it continuously. So each of these outer shells was poured in a continuous pour, it took 48 hours each one all by a sort of queue of, of people coming constantly with these, these pans of concrete, placing it into the form, going back to get another one. Can you imagine that sort of constant flow? And then after all of that's done, when they take away all the form work, they then come back and they polished it and they worked it and they worked the surface, so it makes really is absolutely beautiful. I, when I joined the firm, this was happening in the office. So this is quite a long time ago now. Just joined as a graduate. And this was happening, but a few years ago, it wasn't until a few years ago that I had a chance to go and actually see it. And it really makes you very proud to be an engineer when you actually see something that, that you or your colleagues have worked on and you actually see it finished. And you see the people, the crowds of people coming and going into this place and, and, and enjoying this, this building. And that's what, for me, is one of the joys of being an engineer, why I became an engineer and why I've stuck with engineering all my working life, is that you get to design stuff and have it built and it changes people's lives or it influences people's lives in a way that, that is it's hard to describe actually, but it's just such a rewarding thing to do.